Good morning, All Saints. <clears throat> I hope this Sunday morning finds you all well. It's a beautiful, sunny July day. So um, apologies for the date on that. I should have changed that to the 11th of July. But it is the fifth Sunday of Trinity, and this is our service of online morning praise. So wherever you find yourself, come and gather and worship at the foot of the cross. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. In the wilderness we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord, sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The first reading this morning is the Old Testament reading. It's the, a reading from Amos chapter 7, verses 7 to 15. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. I will never again. Mm, sorry. This way. I will never again pass by them. Pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos said, has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O oh, seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there and prophesy there. For never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. And Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock and the Lord said to me, go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please stand or stand just a little bit upright, more straight in your chair or wherever you find yourself for our gospel reading. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. King Herod heard of the healings and other miracles for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason, these powers are, are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Her Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Her Herodias, his brother Philip's wife because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not 
for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? He replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ, our, our Lord. So just a brief reflection on those readings. They're full of contrast, and yet there's a theme. Amos has listened to God and therefore he's been shaped utterly, his vocation has been shaped utterly by God's purpose for him. He was just a humble herdsman and yet he found himself at the center of public and political life to prophesy to Israel and he was causing much trouble because he was speaking truth and the kingdom, we're told the kingdom couldn't bear all the truth of his words and yet God needed him to speak truth to Israel. And there's something about that, isn't there? There's something about uh, the truth that sometimes we find hard to bear. Organizations are like that all the time, institutions. Um, we have the modern phenomenon of the whistleblower, probably not so, so modern, but we call, it, call, call them that these days, the whistleblower. Um, people whose voice is not, there's no room for, and who've got something very, very important to uh, say about the integrity of, of the institutions or what's happening. And Amos was a whistleblower for Israel. He was speaking the truth of God's word as God had delivered it to him. And the trouble that he was stirring up was God's truth that Israel couldn't bear. And in contrast, we have this deadly story of Herod. It's a very gruesome tale, this, this deadly banquet. And scripture's full of, of, of sort of hidden stories um, in the midst of, of, of the main story of Jesus's life. And John the Baptist plays a really important role in, in the gospel, but I'm very interested in Herod's daughter, and I wonder if there's a contrast to be made between Herod's daughter, who delivers up this, this murderous resentment, this, this terrible uh, ending to, to the banquet. And she does so perhaps, she does so completely uh, doing the will of her mother. And she's completely undifferentiated from her mother. <laughs> She's just doing the, the work of her a mother's own resentments and, and, and simmering brooding and, and murderous intent. And it's, there's a sadness to that, that um, the daughter is so within the clutches of her mother that she, her own vocation as a person in her own right isn't, isn't shaped at all. She's just doing the, the deadly will of her mother. And I wonder where you are in your life. I wonder whether God is speaking a purpose to you. Is there truth that you must speak that others will find hard to bear? Or are you struggling to, to come out of the shadows of your background, of your parents, of your family in some way, and that you feel that God's calling is, is, is elsewhere or, or, or God's calling is to is to call you to a place where you can bear 
the full truth. We'll all be in different places, but one thing is for sure, the gospel does talk about, and the Old Testament um, throughout, throughout scripture, talks about God having a purpose for us. And each of us, we're all one in the body of Christ, but we all have a, a vocation. And I wonder whether you need to find, you feel that you need to come out of the shadows of, of something, of your background, of your education, of your current circumstances, whatever it would, may be, of a, of a particularly difficult, resentful relationship. Or whether you, like Amos, can listen to the voice of God and can bear the truth of it and can be called to speak truth in the midst of power, perhaps, or in the midst of, of a family, or in the midst of your current circumstances. We do so gently and we do so with the power of God, not in our own power, not in our own ego. But it's worth thinking about this week, it's worth praying over this week, your own vocation. Where are you being called? What truth are you being asked to bear? Amen. And let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together the words that Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the collect for today. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So go well. Keep an eye on the bulletin for... Uh, any announcements, remember our community open day on the 31st of July, the very last day in July, on a Saturday, 12 to 4, just come along and enjoy. It's all outside, apart from church tours inside for, for um, household groups. So go well and, um, and peace be with you uh, this day and this week. And we say the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So we shall um, see one another soon, I hope, and uh, go well. Peace be with you. Take care.